What's up, Haley? Haley, how come you never were live? How come you were never live? Where were you at? Mm. How was your week, Mr. C? I'm doing okay. Who's absent today? Chris, go back to your seat. What? All right. Hey, uh, head shrunk boy, close the door for me, please. It looks like one of those shrunken heads. Rowan, make your eyeballs bug out. Beginning of multiple steps. Um, questions on it? No. All right. I'm going to call out the answers that are written. You're going to correct me if I'm wrong. Yes? All right. Here we go. Uh, number one, A equals one. Number two, P equals negative six. Uh, number three, B equals zero. Uh, number four, P equals negative three. Uh, number five, uh, A equals seven. Negative seven. Negative seven. Negative seven. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, number six, P equals negative 40. What? Oh, what? No. No. Eight. I got eight. I got negative six. I don't know. I got trouble. I got I got trouble. I got I got That's right. That's right. You guys are all wrong. She's right. What is it? P equals negative 40. What? Negative 40. Can you explain that one? Because I got confused on it. Whoa. All right. Three, two. All right, let's do this one. Five plus five. Uh, and then parentheses, five P minus seven. And then equals negative 230. Okay. Uh, distributive property first. So we get five plus, first arrow is 25 P. And the second arrow is negative 35. Yes? Mm -hmm. You got that so far? All right, a positive 5 and a negative 35. Oh, I did the 5 first. I did minus 5 first. 
Well, it's not a minus five. It's a plus five. No, I mean before I did distributors, I just did minus you five. You can't. This is multiplication. No, the other one. Next one. What do you mean the other one? First five. Do what you did you do with it? Minus. Oh, you subtract from both sides. That would work. Okay. I'm not going to choose. That's I'm going to choose did. not to do that. All right. We'll, we'll be together after one step. Okay. Uh, a five and a negative 35 turns um, into? A negative 30. Okay, so we get 25p minus 30 equals negative 230. This is probably where you made a mistake. What do we do? Add 30 to both sides. Positive 30. A positive 30 and a negative 230 would be negative 200. And that's probably yeah, where your mistake that's what I did. That's what I did wrong. No, I have it. I'm still here. Oh, but wait a minute. How many times does 25 go into 200? Not 40 times. Is it 8? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you're dividing by a... So the actual answer is P equals... Negative 8. Negative 8. How many quarters does it take to make 2 bucks? No, I got it. Oh, good. All right. You need a lot more zeros on that one. Yeah, if it was 2,000. All right. Yeah. Okay. I wrote five instead of Right. All right, number seven, um, R equals eight. Yep. Number eight, X equals negative two. Yep, I didn't get that. Which one? Uh, seven. Uh, distributive property give you negative five R minus five. Yeah? Usually, if you're going to make a mistake, you drop a negative there. Negative 5R minus 5 minus 6R. Combine the two negatives. That would give you negative 11R, so forth and so on. What are we on? 9? Yeah. M equals negative 6. Right? Number 10, A equals 7. Number 11, M equals negative 7. Stop me if I'm wrong. I thought... Number 10, negative 7? Yeah. Yeah. Like a negative. yeah, you dropped a negative. You did it right. Yeah, it so it'd be right. 102 minus, uh, divided by, I'm sorry, uh, negative 98 divided by positive. So it'd be negative 7. So negative 7 for number 10. And then the last one, number 12, R equals 7. Okay. Cool. So I just took a person's at random. We graded it. You know, they got about three of them wrong. And every time it was a mistake, it wasn't a, I don't know what I'm doing type mistake. It's a silly mistake. I drop a negative, something like that. That is a very, very common thing. We deal with multiple step equations. You're doing a heck of a lot of math, right? Chances of you making a mistake are pretty, pretty, pretty large. Yeah. Negative seven? Uh, yeah, negative seven. Negative seven. All right. Uh, Let's collect this. Oh, it's good stuff. All oh, today is fun. No, today's important. So what? Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> Turn off the light. We'll just have nap time. Yeah. 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 No. All right. Uh, quiz is tomorrow. The quiz tomorrow will be on two steps. And what you had last night for homework, the simple multiple steps. We're going to get to much more complicated uh, multiple steps, but we're not there yet. Hey, I want you to listen carefully. I'm going to show you something today that's really cool. And for those of you that hate fractions, you're going to love this. But it is messy. Okay? All right. It will be a worksheet tonight. It will be a worksheet. Yay. All right, we okay? Josie. All right, I need everyone to watch. I'm gonna do this very slowly, okay? Uh, just remember 3.4 is not the distributive property, right? Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, we're doing multiple step equations. Uh, last day, right, here's what we did. The so last day we did uh, this one. You had that last night for homework. You have variables on one side, combine like terms, right? That's the idea. Then it turns into a two-step equation, solve the two-step, yeah? Did you say last day? You did. So you said last day. Last day. Last day. What's wrong with that? I don't know, it just doesn't make more sense. It's like last day. Just 
Sounds last good. day. Yeah, okay, I got that. The last day. There we go. Uh, this is what we did. Uh, we had variables, on, multiple variables on one side. We just basically grouped them together. And we did that with constants as well, too. Further, we apply this that you can, on both sides, individually, one side at a time, combine like terms. The second thing we saw, we saw this for two days in a row, is distributive property. You should be nearly experts at this. But as we saw, right, you can make mistakes on this if you're not careful. We finished yesterday's class with this problem right here. That ugly mess right there. Before today's class, what would you have to do to solve that? I would have to get common denominator. This is painful, right? This is why working with fractions is painful because you got to get this thing called common denominator. Today, I will show you a alternate method. It only works with equations. I got to be very clear about this. This only works with equations. Guess what you will be dealing with this year? All the time. Rarely will we have expressions. So from algebra onward, typically we deal with equations all the time or inequalities. This also works with inequalities. I'm going to teach you a way of never having to deal with a fraction ever again, as long as you have an equation. This only works with equations. Okay. People don't like fractions, right? It seems like too much work. So this only applies to an equation that has fractions. So here's the fraction that I'm going to claim through some magical method that I'm going to make easier. I'm going to turn that into this. Could you solve this equation? Yeah. Pretty simple, right? This one, not very simple. A lot of work involved, common denominators, right? This, pretty simple. I will caution you, we will not get friendly answers today. Why? Because it's fractions. You're going to get an ugly answer. But this is way, the second one I'm pointing to, is way easier to solve than the first one. Oh, by the way, these are the same equations. There's no difference between this one and that one, mathematically speaking. Uh, I better I better show you how to do this. This is called clearing the fraction. It's a method of getting rid of the fractions and dealing nothing but integer coefficients and constants. Okay? We like that, right? So clearing the fractions, write this down, box one. It's the process of turning a rational equation, that means an equation involving fractions, into integer equation. Hey, the numbers we like to solve with. I don't know of any person in higher level math that, that just doesn't do this. Like, oh, I got, I got an equation with fractions. I'm clearing that fraction. It's not a requirement. You don't have to do this. I just don't know of anyone who doesn't do this. Why? Because we don't like fractions. They're more challenging to work with. So I am teaching you a alternate method of solving an equation with fractions. It is not required. Right? If you literally want to put your pencil down right now, I'm not going to stop you. But I will say this. If you don't want to learn this, guess what you have to do with yours? you got to get common denominator, and you got to, you got to solve your equation with fractions. The rest of us, we're going to do it the easy way. This is the easy way. If you don't want to learn this, then you've got to deal with fractions. Okay. So we will turn fractions into, quote, quote, friendly numbers. I'm going to turn that sucker right there into that, and I'm going to solve this one, the easy one. I'm not going to deal with fractions anymore, as long as it's an equation. All right. So it's entirely optional, but we don't have to learn this. Yeah. How is 5 over 4 the same as 15? Agreed. Looks weird. How is 5 over the 4 the same as 15? Who doesn't go into 5? Agreed. <laughs> right? It looks like it's magic. Let me show you the magic. So here's the trick. The trick is this. Is that an equation? How do you know it's an equation? An equal set. Is it a true equation? Yep. Yeah, because 4 plus 1 is 5. So it's true. If you start off with a true equation, right, not an inequality, you start off with a true equation, you are allowed in algebra to do anything you want to both sides, as long as you do it to both sides. This is the trick. You are allowed to multiply all of those numbers by any number you want. I'm just going to pick a number at random, two. I hope I picked it. Yeah, two. I'm going to multiply every number by two. Four times two. Two. 
look what I get. I get a true equation. Not the same, this was Josie's problem. She was looking at the two equations like, wait a minute, 10 isn't five, but did I get another true equation? Right? This is the trick. You're allowed to do this. You don't have to do this, but you're allowed to do this. Okay, what? No, we're gonna multiply by a special number. Hey, this is an equation, right? It's a variable equation. Uh, can anybody solve this real quick? X equals two, yes? Yeah. Subtract one from both sides and divide by two. So we already know that X equals two, this is an easy one. Let's do the same trick. We're allowed to multiply everything by whatever number we want. I'll pick an easy one, two. What's two times two X? Four. Two. Ten. Solve this one. X equals four. X doesn't equal four. X equals, X equals two again. You are allowed to take any equation algebraically and multiply by any number you want, and you will still get to the same answer. This is the trick that's going to get rid of fractions, right? Let me show you how it works. By the way, x equals 2 on both of these. You get the same answer. Why would I want to multiply by 2? I'll show you why. It's going to get rid of the fraction. It's the method of clearing the fraction. So I'm going to take this ugly thing and I'm going to multiply by a special number. You want to guess what the special number is? 38. 2? It won't be 2. 3. Ten. It will be the common denominator. What's the common denominator of 3, 2, and 4? 2. Not 2. Uh, like Not, well, yeah, 12. Oh. Hey. Let's multiply everything by 12. Where did I get 12 from? It's the common denominator. Oh, by the way, if you don't want to use this method, guess what you got to do? You got to make them all 12s anyway. So it's not like you're doing extra work here. You're just choosing to do it in a different form or fashion. Yours is going to get rid of the fraction. The other way, if you don't want to do this, you're going to have a fraction. I'd rather not have a fraction. So I'm going to multiply everything by 12. The only downfall of this is this is where it gets a little messy. I'm going to multiply everything by the common denominator, which is 12. So I'm going to take the first fraction, multiply by 12. Second fraction, multiply by 12. Last fraction, multiply by 12. This is where it gets messy. So there's the multiplication. One at a time. What's 12 divided by 3? 4n. What's 12 divided by 2? 6n. Oh, this one's a little bit more. we got to do some canceling over here. Let me catch up with you. Uh, 12 times 5 is 60, divided by 4 is 15. Or, let's reduce this, 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 12, and 3 times 5 is, this is where we got that from. And you're like, well, that looks like a lot of math, how does that make my life easy? Remember, what's the alternative? We gotta make common denominators. You're gonna be dealing with fractions anyway. So it's not like you get away from not getting rid of 12. You, got, I mean, you, you don't get away from the fact that you got to deal with 12 being the common denominator. But this now is pretty easy to solve. 4 minus 6. 4 minus 6. Not 2. Negative 2. Negative 2 n, right? And what do we do to both sides now? Not by 2. Negative 2. So we get negative 15 over 2. And you're like, wait a minute. That's not a friendly, I didn't say it was ever going to be a friendly answer, and it won't be. It's fractions to begin with. Chances are you'll have a fraction to wind up with. What I'm claiming is that this is way easier to solve than that. The alternative is you got to make a common denominator, 12. So why not just get rid of the fractions from the start? This is why I don't know of anyone that says, yeah, I'm going to get common denominators. It's, it's more work. And you wind up with uglier numbers. These are nice, friendly numbers. This is called clearing the fraction. Clearing the fraction. Let me show you how that works. If you look at all the denominators, it's got to be an equation, though. You can't do this for an expression. It doesn't work for expressions. Hey, look at all the denominators. What's the common denominator? Everybody? Common denominator is 20. So I'm going to take everything, this thing, this thing, and this thing, and multiply each by 20. Because it's the common denominator. Okay, uh, 5 and 20, what does that reduce to? Four. Okay, once that reduces to a 4, 
four times two D. Uh, once five, five times three D and 20 times three. I got rid of all the fractions. Could you solve that quickly and easily? If not, you made everything into something over 20, including this one. And now you're dealing with adding, subtracting with fractions, and then finally dividing with fractions. I'm not doing with any of that. I'm dealing with eight and a 15. Way easier. Eight plus 15? Uh, Last step? You're not going to get a friendly answer. Why? Well, look at the problem to start with. It's this ugly looking fraction. That's why the answer is really ugly. But the procedure gets rid of the fractions so that you don't have to do the algebra with fractions till the very end. Sometimes you will get a nice friendly number, but most of the time you won't. Tonight for homework, only a few times where you get a nice friendly answer. All right, let's do one. Box two. This only works with equations or inequalities. Doesn't work with expressions. You don't see an equal sign or greater than less than, you can't do this. Uh, four and three, what's the common denominator? I'm gonna multiply, you need space. I'm gonna multiply everything by 12, everything by 12. So the first fraction, the second fraction, and this constant right here. It's also easy to forget that it says minus x over three. So I'm gonna rewrite it, multiplying everything with 12. Who's lost? And I'm, I'm gonna, I don't know if I wanna crush you or, or encourage you, one of the two, but I'm gonna say, as we go forward, almost all of our equations look like this. We don't get these nice two X plus one equals five, right? We get these really ugly equations that we deal with from now on, okay? So the encouragement of why do I want to do this work is to make your life easier. All right, uh, what reduces, let's see, 4 and 12, 4 goes into 12 how many times? So cancel, make the 12 into a 3. Is everybody okay with this cross reduction? You understand what I'm doing here? Uh, 3 into 12 turns into a 4. See this minus sign? It's kind of hidden right here. It's easy to forget that that says minus. Well, 12 times 10 is easy. Uh, three times three X, no, nine X, four times X, and it's a minus, so minus four X, 12 times 10 is 120. You tell me, look at what we started with, and look at where we're at. Which one do you want to solve? Clearly, the second one is ridiculously easy to solve. The first one is, I don't even know what to do. Doesn't even make sense to me. 3x over 4 minus x over 3. If you don't do this method, you got to make common denominators. You got to turn that 4 into a 12, a 3 into 12, and the 10 to something over 12. You're going to be messing with 12 regardless. Why not do it the easy way? Clear the fraction. You can do, almost do this in your head. Haley. One more time. I'm saying, if you don't want to do this mess right here, guess what you would have to do? Make common denominators. My claim is that this is the only painful portion, and it's not that painful. You make a common denominator, and the truth is every single one will cancel of some sort of fashion. Right? As long as it was a fraction. This one wasn't a fraction, so that's why nothing canceled. But you're making a common denominator, so you're going to get this canceling every single time you wind up with these beautiful, friendly numbers. 9 minus 4, then and therefore, and it's whatever 120 divided by 5 is. There, This is the only one that we get a nice friendly answer. What's the answer? 24. 44, is that right? 24, okay. Who would have figured that this mess up there turns into 24? This is a math teacher answer right here. Most of the time, you're going to get these weird fractional answers because you start with fractions, you typically wind up with fractions. All right, who's lost? Right, you're lost on the procedure. You're lost on, oh, that's a lot of calculations. Well, unfortunately, I can't help you on the fact that it's a lot of calculations. It is. Uh, lots of room to make mistakes, too. Lots of room for those of us, myself included, that are messy to make mistakes with the crossing off, 
write little tiny numbers, dropping a negative here and there, easy to make a mistake. But this is called reducing the fraction. All right, you want to do the one by yourself? You want to try it with me? All right, let's do it together. Do I have the steps here? I do. Okay. So common denominator, the one on the left is 14. I'm going to multiply everything with a 14. Everything with a 14. The first fraction, the second fraction, and the, well, the negative one, I'm also going to multiply by 14. So this is me being really lazy. Instead of rewriting it and giving myself space, I'm going to try to squeeze it all in. All right? Uh, most students try to do it like this. Even though I will encourage them not to, they will just squeeze that 14 in there and they'll make it fit. And then what happens, they start doing canceling, they kind of run out of space, and they can't read what they're writing. I would encourage you to not do it like this, but to rewrite the entire equation. Make, give yourself plenty of room. But I'm also a realist to know that probably half the people aren't listening at this point. I'm going to do it anyway. So I'll show you what it looks like. All right. Uh, 14 divided by 2, 7. So that cancels. That turns into a 7. Uh, 14 divided by 7. And this canceling thing, because we're multiplying by the common denominator, happens every time. Something will cancel. Notice how small the numbers are. You kind of don't have much space. Yeah. Wait, so we're just we're times it by the top? Okay. Say that one more time. We're, okay, so we're not doing 14 over 1 times t, t over 2? We are doing that, absolutely. The, the part where I said was, I teach it that way, and then I get kids that will, in red, just write 14 next to everything and then try to do all the work right there. I, I'm a realist. I know that this is what most people will do anyway. So I'm showing you what it would look like. It's cool in PowerPoint because I can make things nice and pretty. So you got 17 plus 15? Yeah, so let's see. 17 plus 2 times 1, 2 minus, we're just minus 14. Hey, look at that friendly thing. Hey, we could solve that really easy. What do we do first? Subtract 2 from both sides. We get negative 16. I skipped the step where I wrote minus 2, minus 2. Yes. You, are you okay right here? What? Do you understand why I multiplied everything by 14? Okay, well, let's multiply by 14. I got a 2 underneath a 14. What's 14 divided by 2? So that's where this 7 came from right there. What's 14 divided by 7? That's where the 2 came from. Now we just got to do the multiplication. 7 times t. 7 times t. 2 times 1. And negative 1 times 14 is negative 14. That's where those numbers came from. Now, as we go higher in algebra 1, you're going to see me start to skip steps on two-step. Okay, it's a two-step equation. How many two-step equations have we done this year so far? Maybe not hundreds, but close to a hundred, right? We know how it ends. I don't need to put minus two, minus two. We know what we're supposed to do. Now, the issue is this. Some of you still need that visual indicator of same signs or different signs. So for those of you that cannot do this in your head, write the steps. Same or different signs. So that means add or subtract, right, which is why it's negative 16. Yeah, but what's the well, then what do we got to do? Last step. Divide by seven. So is it going to be a friendly answer? No. no, it's not going to be even a satisfying answer. Oh. You're going to get this weird answer, but look at the problem to start with. It was weird to start with. We can just make it into a fraction of a decimal. Yeah, we are not making anything into a decimal. Oh, okay, good. That makes Nothing good. into a decimal. It has to be a reduced fraction, right? But we don't make fraction in a decimal in algebra one or higher. Unless it's a real world problem and they say something like write your answer in decimal form. All right, second one. What's the common denominator? Kristen, count by threes. Oh, you're done. Good job. All right, so we're going to multiply everything by. So I'll do it your method, which is you try to squeeze that 15 next to everything. Instead of listening to me, which is give yourself some room, that's what you do. I don't know why I encourage you to do bad things, but I'm, I'm encouraging you to do bad things. All right, uh, let's see. Kaylee, what's 15 divided by 3? 
So I'm going to cancel that and write a five. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. 15 divided by five is, okay, I'm going to write a three. And then 15 divided by three, you said was a five. So I'm going to write a five. 15 times two. Three times four. Minus Q times five. All right, Q. All right, minus five Q. There we go. Land and do the math for me. Get rid of both sides. What would that give me? 18. Mm -hmm. And then you uh, divide by the 85. So to 5. Negative. There you go. Clearing the fractions. It is the preferred method of solving any equation that has fractions. Questions? Tonight for homework. I'm going to give you not like 40 of these. All right, that would take too long, but I'm going to give you some of these. Remember, this is optional. If you don't want to do this, then you got to make common denominators. Good luck with that. All right. Uh, common denominator, one more. Nine, six, and three. What's common denominator? 36. 36 is a common denominator. It's not the least common multiple. 18. 18, it would be the least common multiple. So, so I'm going to go with 18. 36 would work. If you use the not the least common multiple, then you have some reducing to do at the very end. Okay? So we'll use 18. Oh, it's like a lot of, this is the only stuff that requires a lot of work. The only cool thing about this is you're guaranteed things will cancel because you're multiplying by the common denominator. 18 divided by 9? 18 divided by 6? Stop me if I'm going too quick. 18 divided by 3. This is the cool thing about it is that you're guaranteed something will cancel. Now we just got to do the multiplication. 2 times 1 Two. equals 3 times 5 Two. minus 6 times m. Six. I'd much rather solve that equation than that thing. Chris, you just walk me through. Tell me what to do to both sides. Uh, We're getting rid of the negative 6 or the 15? No. So what do we do to both sides? Are we adding or subtracting? We are subtracting. That's going to give me negative 13. Now what? Both sides by? Okay, and we're not going to get a friendly answer here. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. There you go. You start with an ugly fractions to begin with, you get an ugly answer. It's not 100% true, but it will be tonight. Who's got questions? All right, this big boy, big girl math right here. This is like no joke. This is like, I was never taught this, by the way, until college. Like, quit. my teacher's like, nope, we're getting common denominators. You're going to deal with fractions. Maybe that's why I'm comfortable with dealing with fractions as well, too. And I got to college, and uh, the math professor's like, what are you doing? What are you, an idiot? Who, who wants to deal with fractions? And I was like, well, okay, I guess I'm an idiot. And then I saw them. I saw the, the beauty of getting rid of the fractions. It's like, okay, I am an idiot, right? Mm -hmm. Let me get rid of the fractions. This is much easier. All right, one more. Common denominator, Porter. Three, two, and five. Ooh, we got to do some thinking on that one. 15, except for two. Thirty. So as soon as you saw fifteen, you could have counted by fifteens. Next one would be thirty, and find one. Okay. So yeah. So thirty. We got to multiply everything by thirty. Oh, I see a lot of people watching me do this instead of doing this with me. All right. We're on box four. Do this with me. Uh, thirty divided by three. That's ten. Thirty divided by three. I'm not doing the multiplication yet. I'm just doing the division. 30 divided by 2? Uh, 15. Okay. And 30 divided by 5? 6. 
This is the messy, this is the only step you gotta be careful with, the rest is easy. This is a little bit messy, this step. Tristan, do the multiplication. Look at my work and you do my multiplication. What are we multiplying? Which is what? Say it. Negative. Negative what? 10 times 2. Ten times two. Negative twenty. Negative 20. Okay. And then what are we multiplying? Keep going. And then there you go. Good job. Piper, walk me through. What do we do now? Are we getting rid of the fifteen or are we getting rid of the six? How do you get rid of 15? Minus 15 for both sides, minus 35. What? Minus 30? Yeah, because remember, both would be negative. So you've got to add. Divide both sides by 6 and you're done. Yeah? Okay. Uh, on the scale of difficulty for this year, this is definitely in the medium to high category of what we're doing this year. Right? Um, this is definitely not easy, but it's also not hard. We haven't got to even remotely see the hard stuff yet. This is this is medium, maybe medium hard, but it's it's definitely not hard. And oh, by the way, understanding what's going on is easy. We will get to some stuff that you will struggle with even understanding what are we doing. I'm not clear. This is the easy to understand. It's the hard to actually do. All right. Uh, I'm going to skip these. Did anybody actually do them? Okay. I'm going to move on to the last thing, which is this. Look at this one. This is the hardest one to understand. So I teach you this um, uh, clearing the fraction thing, and then I get to one involving the distributive property, and then I start to lose some people. All right, so let me try to explain it to you in easier numbers. Okay, what's going on here? Multiplication, addition, or both? Both. But if we think of this in just more general terms, it's just multiplication. It's this thing times this thing. Remember, right, this thing is made up of an addition. But it's this thing times this thing equals this thing. We're going to clear the fraction here. It's got a fraction. The difference is how many things are up there. And by things, I mean this magic word, terms. Terms are things that are not multiplied together that are separated by addition or subtraction. How many things are not being multiplied together? Two things are being multiplied together. There's only one thing here. It's this thing times this thing. There's only one term up there. It's hard to see. It's this thing. It's easier if I wrote that. Hey, there's only one thing here, A times B. There's only one term. I'm choosing to write this term in a much more complicated form. But there's only one term. If there's only one term, when we multiply both sides, I don't multiply everything by the common denominator. I just multiply once on the left and once on the right. So let me just, for distributive property involving fractions, you just got to multiply one time. Why? Because there's only really one thing here. You know, there's not, there's an A and a B. Yeah, they're being multiplied together. A term is things being added or subtracted. But yeah, right there. Yeah, but this is in parentheses. So it's really just one thing, whatever the sum of x and 2 is. Okay? So when you see this distributive property and you clear the fraction, we don't multiply everything by the common denominator. We just multiply the left side by the common denominator and the right side by the common denominator. Because it's just one thing. Okay? So let's do this one. So here we go. What's the common denominator here? Well, that's easy. It's 5. Right? There's only one denominator, so the common denominator is 5. So I said if you have the distributive property, you don't multiply everything. You just multiply the left times the common denominator and the right. So all I have to do is multiply the left times 5 and the right times 5, and we're, well, we're done. We're clearing the fraction. Watch. What's 5 divided by 5? It cancels. It's gone. So the fraction is gone. 
Now it turns into the last night's homework. Did I say it right this time around? Mm -hmm. He's not listening. Yes, you did say it right this time. Okay. So could you solve this one now? Hey, no more fractions. Okay, I'll skip the steps, but hey. That's it. That's it. Distributive property, yes or no? Yep. So we only need to multiply the left side and the right side by the common denominator. Common denominator. What's the common denominator? Three. Negative three. You could say either negative three or three. There is definitely some people out there that are like, I want to get rid of that negative. Well, you're not really getting rid of it. You're just moving it to the other side. So either one would be fine. Multiply either by three or negative three. Some people would say, yeah, let's get rid of that negative because we'll forget about it. Other people will say, well, no, you'll just forget about it when you multiply it by six. I can buy either flavor of that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to multiply by negative three so I can get rid of the negative three. What's negative three divided by negative three? It, it cancels. The negatives go away, at least on the left side. But on the right side, it's negative now. So you're left with, don't forget this too, we didn't do anything with it. Okay, well that all looks like last night's homework. Now you have to be self-conscious. Could you solve this? Okay. Yeah. What are we gonna multiply both sides by? Two. We're gonna multiply both sides by two. Two divided by two? One. Cancels. So you're left with that. Could you solve that? Yeah. Absolutely. Quick note, right? Uh, what do we multiply both sides by this time? Uh, six. By two. six, right? Oh. What are we multiplying both sides by? Three. By what? Twenty. Yeah, this is the one. I don't think I gave you any one like this for homework. Oh. So this is the deal. Here's a denominator and here's here's no denominator. And then we got something on the inside. Remember, this whole thing is just one number that's being multiplied by that. So when, for this particular, we only consider that one. And if there was one over here. So we're gonna multiply both sides by two. So when you multiply both sides by two, you don't get rid of the fractions on the inside. So this one is the ugliest of the ugliest of the ugliest. Luckily in algebra one, we seldom see one that looks like this. I'm just going to warn you, well, what's on the inside is fractions. You're best to just distribute the fraction to the inside and then clear the fraction. Okay? I didn't give you one like this. But this one is as ugly as it gets right here. So this particular, that second one right there, I would distribute the five halves to the inside. Uh, you can also do this with decimals. Right? Do you like decimals? No, no one likes decimals. So this is called clearing the decimals and you can after doing clearing the fractions you can probably figure out what we're going to do anybody want to take a shot at it how can we make everything into nice friendly numbers what happens when you multiply any number by times 10. it moves the decimal place once to the right so what would happen if we multiply that number times 100 Ooh, no more decimal. What happened? Well, whatever. Once we decide to multiply one number times 100, all of them by 100. So to clear the decimal, it's the same process, but we're going to move decimal places. And oh, by the way, no one actually multiplies, they just move a decimal. Of all the numbers, which one has the most decimals right now? Okay, how many decimals does it have? So let's move all of them. Two decimal places. What are we really multiplying by when we do that? We're really multiplying everything through by 100. Nobody actually does that. They simply just move the decimal place. So if I move this one two places, I got to move this one. I got to move that one two places. If I move this one three places, I got to move that one. I got to move that one three places, so forth and so on. So you look at whichever one has the most decimals. Hey, both of these have two. And you move everything two decimal places. Boom. So you tell me, you want to solve one with decimals or you want to solve one without decimals? No. Most people would rather do it without decimals. Because I can do this quickly in my head. 25 and 70? 95 and then divide both sides by... And you're done. Once again, clearing the decimals is optional. 
If you don't clear it, guess what you got to do? You got to solve this one with decimals. Most people would choose to solve this one instead. It is an optional. I'm not going to mark you wrong if you don't do it. I'm not even going to mark you wrong if you don't do tonight's homework. You're like, I'm doing it my way. I'm going to deal with fractions. I'm going to deal with decimals. How about it? I applaud you for your <clears throat> doing it the hard way. All right, we'll do one call it a day. All right, this is box, whatever that says. Eight. All right, let's do it. Hey, how many decimals? Eight. All right, well, let's move the decimal place. So this now turns into, this turns into, you got to be careful, because we're moving it two decimal places, and that turns into, now we simply solve that. 25 and 70? Oops, I didn't solve this one. 95x, and that one is 233, last step. x equals 233 over 95. Anybody know if that can be reduced? I don't know. Uh, does 3 go into 95? Nope. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Uh, who's got the graphing calculator? It is a little known fact that all graphing calculators will automatically reduce fractions. You don't need to do anything. Give me a fraction that can be reduced, somebody. 2 over 6, which we can all do in our head, which is? All right, watch the magic. You got your calculator? Do 2 divided by 6. Enter. And you're like, well, wait a minute. That's not a fraction. You ready for the magic? Magic finger. This button here is called math. Press it once. What's the first thing it says? F-R-A-C. Hit enter. And then hit enter again. And guess what your calculator now says? One third. One third. So let's see if this can be reduced. 233 divided by 95. When you hit enter, it's going to give you the decimal. But to see if it can be reduced as a fraction, you hit math. Rack, hit it again, and it says 23 over 95. Oh, because I typed in the wrong number. So it says 233 over 95 can't be reduced. Okay, there you go. Uh, this is pretty pretty handy thing. If you know what to do with your calculator, it will do every bit of the math that we do every single day if you know what to press. All right? To include solve equations, this will solve all equations. You just got to know what buttons to press. Hey, what's this button right here on the lower right? What's it say? What's it literally say? Look at your calculators. On the lower right. S-O-L-V-E. Your calculator will solve problems for if you know what to do. All right. So for those of you interested, you go look and figure it out. All right. Any questions on anything I showed you today? Is today a required class? No. Right? Will it make your life easier? Yep. Absolutely 100%. I don't know of anyone, especially when you get to a higher level math, algebra 2, free calculus, that doesn't clear fractions. Right? Because it does make it way easier. All right. I have given you eight problems. Uh, four with fractions, four with decimals. In the remaining, no, no, we're out of time. You literally oh, shot me for something. Rosie, you should see my backpack. Oh, yes, no. It's important. And I just feel like I'm about the same. That's if you get one, you went like this. So much. I think you'd have a heart attack if I organized my backpack. I think you'd have a heart attack if I organized my backpack. I think you'd have a heart attack if I organized my backpack. Yes. All right, Haley, any questions? No, I'm good. Excellent. Have a nice lunch because we are. Thank you, too. Later.